We do welcome everyone. It's good to see all of here. Let's all stand as our comes and leads us in our call to worship and opening prayer. 430, sunshine in my soul. Sometimes it's hard for us to understand. But Father, I pray that they look on the Lord's side at each person with us and see, Father, that whatever the condition, whatever the situation, that Father, you can make it good. You can make it best. Thank you for each one that's come today. I pray that you'll bless and be with those that aren't able to be with us, whatever the reason might be. We do know that there are some that are sick among us know that there are some away, some are working. Bless them, whatever. Father, take charge of this time. Be with our pastor as he brings the word that you put upon his heart. Bless him and his family as they work and serve him. Guide us, direct us in my son's precious name. Amen. May be seated. <coughs> In the way of announcements in your bulletins, there are a few things you need to be aware of on the opposite side of the morning worship. Next, uh, tonight, uh, today, after the morning worship, we'll have a short time of business following the morning worship time. 
We will have an evening worship this evening at 6 o'clock. Wednesday night Bible study is coming Wednesday at 7 o'clock in the, in the uh, kitchen area. Next Sunday, we will have an Easter banquet. Bring whatever you would like to bring. Uh, entree, vegetable, dessert, whatever lay, lay upon your heart to bring. Um, as long as the weather's okay, uh, as long as it doesn't look like rain on Sunday, We'll have an Easter egg hunt after the banquet. I would recommend that for those who will be involved, that you may want to bring a change of clothes, just in case you know you get a little mud or whatever, or you don't want to go around in your good shoes. You want to change your, you know, your tennis shoes or whatever afterwards. Do that. I mean, feel free to, to do that. You know, you can change afterwards, uh, after the service, as for that before the banquet. You know, you can change into some other kind of clothes if you want to go out there and, 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 and hunt for the eggs and like I said for the adults and the, and the older older people it's going to be a little bit more difficult to find them. The young kids, the little kids, we'll, we'll have them easy but still depending upon if it, they call for some type of rain maybe by Friday, if it does, it may be a little wet, I don't know, and about how much rain we get between now and Sunday. So keep this in mind, no evening worship next Sunday, so keep that in mind. And then the following Sunday, uh, April the 8th, which is of course Easter Sunday, we're only going to have an Easter morning service at 10 a.m. No Sunday school, no worship in the evening, so keep that in mind on Easter Sunday, a 10 a.m. service. So keep, uh, keep that in mind. We will be collecting for Annie Armstrong until Easter Sunday. Easter Sunday. I think it's a very appropriate time when we have collected so forth $385.21. If you feel led to do that, do that over and above the giving and the working of the church. And we'll do that until April the 8th, Easter Sunday, uh, as far as giving. I mean, if you want to get beyond that, you still can. We'll just let you know that's when we'll basically cut it off as far as for that. Um, have a card here. I'm saying, uh, Many, many of you, some of you who do or don't know, and my apologies for everyone who does. Uh, Hilton passed away this past Thursday. What is Friday? Thursday. Thursday. This past Thursday, Hilton Sylvester, Anne's brother, went to be with the Lord. Uh, we are happy for him that he is now with the Lord. He was a very devoted Christian. He was a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. He is with the Lord. And uh, so, uh, Miss Anne is. Give us a note for your kindness. It means a lot. It says, to the congregation, thank you so much for your expressions of concern during Hilton's illness and death. The lovely flowers, Al's and Frank's and Debbie's visit to the funeral home and the church, your phone calls, and most importantly, your prayers. God is good. We love you and Bernie and the family. So I'll leave this in the back. If you'd like to read it, you can do so. Uh, Ann and the family express their thanks for our prayers and everything during the time of uh, Hilton, but he is far better now as he is with the Lord. So just continue to remember that family in prayer, all of them in prayer as boys with that. Any other announcements I, I may have forgotten? Any, anything else? If not, I'll scripture reading Old Testament for the day is found in Psalms 113, Psalms 113. A prayer of praise, or praising the Lord, in which we should do each and every day of our life. It says, praise the Lord, praise all servants of the Lord, praise the name of the Lord. Let the name of the Lord be praised both now and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to the place where it sets, the name of the Lord is to be praised. The Lord is exalted over all the nations, his glory above the heavens. Who is the Lord our God? He is the one who is enthroned on high, who stoops down to look, and on the heavens and on the earth. He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash from the ash heap. He, he seats them with princes and princesses of their people. He settles the barren women in the home and is a hap, and is a happy mother of children. Praise the Lord. Every day let us praise him all the things that the Lord is doing, even in the midst of trials, tribulations, and no matter what we may be going through, praise the Lord. 
in every day. So let's continue to praise the Lord this morning. The song is out comes in Jesus. One hundred and fifty one, the way of the cross leads home. <clears throat> that we find in Jesus Christ. In John chapter 4, starting in verse 7, it says, When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? Now his disciples had gone into town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, You are a Jew, and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For you see, the Jews did not associate with Samaritans. And it was even more uncommon for a, a man or a Jew of that time even to speak to a woman by themselves as well. So there's two things. But she said, I'm a Samaritan and you're a Jew. How do you even dare talk to me or associate with me? And, um, uh, concerning it. And then Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that asked you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well, and drank from it himself, and did as his sons and his flocks and his herds? Then <clears throat> Jesus answered, everyone who drinks this water, talking about the water that she's drawing out of the well, everyone who drinks this water will thirst again. But whoever drinks the water I give him will never thirst. And indeed, the water I give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. See, that's the difference between the water that we drink physically and the water that we get through the Lord Jesus Christ. 
is something that lasts forever and ever and ever unto salvation. May God bless the reading of his word and may we apply it to our lives and our hearts. In the way of prayer, in the back of your bulletins, there are written a few. I'd ask that you remember these in prayer. Again, I ask that you remember the Sylvester so family in prayer and, and all the family members, uh, Ann Garrett as well as Bernie and uh, his wife Bonnie, isn't it? Yes, his wife Bonnie and, and he, had, he had some children. Two, two daughters? Three daughters. Three daughters. Three daughters. So remember them and all the family members in prayer uh, during this time for grace, for strength, for help, even though they all know that Hilton is with the Lord and he is far better now than he ever has been, they still need grace and strength and help in their life during this time. So remember them in prayer. Uh, the many in nursing homes, Ms. Hattie Carter, as well as all who are in nursing homes, I guess that you continue to remember them also in prayer. Other prayer requests, concerns, thanksgiving, or whatever Lord leads you to do to, that you would like to share with us this morning. Anyone or anything? Renee? Okay. What's that? Okay. Okay. So remember, Ray and Edith Davis and Pam and Tammy in prayer and the family continue to remember them also. Others. Glory. Okay. Yeah, Ricky and Ronnie. Uh, Ricky's having surgery April the 2nd. April 2nd, so remember him in prayer. Billy, little Bill had surgery this past Friday. How did he do? He did good? Okay, so. He served a lot. Yeah, yeah, he, he would be. That's went through some major ordeal there as far as putting all that back together. So he probably will be for a while, but prayer, prayer Thanksgiving that it went well, but just remember him and his recuperation time as far as repairing his ACL. So, yes. Others. Tony. Revival. Revival, yes. Pray for revival. Revival for all of us. Absolutely, yes. Anyone else? Remember each other in prayer. I'd ask that you pray for me as well. Certain things that are going on taking place and I need your prayers. So remember me in prayer. Remember each other in prayer. Pray for each other. Do you remember, of course, Alan Ginger with their uh, recuperation, especially Ginger with her continual rehabbing with since her bypass. Remember her and Al with his part as well, both of them, their physical problems that they have. So remember um, them in prayer as far as what goes on in their life. Waldine, continue to remember Waldine in prayer. Pray for her with her problem that she has. Uh, others as well, just continue to remember them in prayer. The many who are not here with us this morning, give you an update on Danny Hall and pray for them and remember them. Danny has good days now and bad days. The other day he was up, he was uh, converse, uh, not conversing, but he, would, he, he was uh, alert and everything. Uh, had a whole bunch of people from Stark came over there Thursday, no, not Thursday, Friday, Friday. A whole bunch of people from Stark, his, his classmates and all of his friends from Stark, they came Friday and he was up with them and everything else. But the Virginia said after they left, that was it. He just went back to sleep again. I guess he just whooped him out just too much, but they couldn't even get him back up even yesterday. Uh, but he is still having periods where he's having fever and then he's not having fever. So he's still battling with that. So he's not completely out of the woods, but the doctors are dumbfounded as to why he is progressing better than even they thought he was progressing. He is doing real good. Like I said, a lot better. They, they did not understand why he's doing remarkably well. But Virginia told him, I know why. And it's all because of the power of the Lord. And that's exactly why. <coughs> Pray for, for them. They go, it's been over a month that this has been going on. Virginia's been going back and forth from Slidell to East Jefferson Hospital. It takes its toll upon them uh, with it. So just continue to remember them and ask for strength and grace and help in their life and whatever takes place. We have no idea. I know they're going here today and try to see if, he, see if he does wake up. Like I said yesterday, she tried to wake him up and he would not get up for nothing. I mean, couldn't wake him up at all yesterday. You know, it was just too much for him on Friday and all that just takes its toll upon him because he is going through a lot and still has a long way to go. 
remember them in prayer. Pray for them because they're going through a very, very difficult time. They're ups and downs and continue. So remember the Hall family and all that they go through and all that takes place with their, uh, uh, with, with Danny and it takes place with that. Debbie? Yes, absolutely, yes. Salvation for so many. Absolutely, yes. Others? Change it? Okay. Okay. Let's go to the Lord. Almighty God, we come before you this morning, and we do thank you. We thank you for your many, many blessings. Thank you for what you have done and are doing. Thank you for your grace. And Lord, we just lift up each and every one here, and the many that are not. Many things go on in all of our lives. Work, home, self. Temptations that we deal with day in and day out. The struggles, the trials, the tribulations. We pray and we ask for grace, for strength, and for help. We pray for many that are dealing with physical problems and physical ailments. Help them and be with them. We lift up the Hall family. Danny, lift him up. And Lord, whatever your will for him in his life, we lift him up and ask for your grace and for your mercy. We give strength to Virginia, Linda, and all the family members and help them as they are enduring during this time. Help them. Others that are going through physical problems that they are having, we lift them up before you and pray for them as well. We lift up the many who do not know Jesus. We pray for salvation. Friends, family members, co-workers, and even people we've never met. We pray for salvation as so many are in need of your grace and need of salvation today. Lord, as you know, we live in an ungodly society. We live in, a, in, a, in the United States where it is ungodly and we live in a nation where people do not recognize you. And, and so we lift up the many, many Christians who, and what they endure and what goes on, we pray for your help, for your grace, and for your mercy. We lift up the Sylvester so family, pray for your strength, for your grace, and for your help in their life as well. Give them all that's needed. For those who are not here with us this morning, for whatever reason, we lift them up and we pray for them and we are concerned and pray for your for their well-being and pray that you lay upon their heart as well. Be with us, lead us, and guide us. In the name of Jesus, we ask it. Amen. For well, off to our hymn turning to 483, left stand as we sing Footsteps of Jesus.
Almighty God, we come before you. We just thank you, Lord, for your many, many blessings. See to it that all is collected as you just convert into your kingdom, spreading the gospel in the name of Jesus. share with you a simple song from out the hymn book, Oh How He Loves You and Me. It's one that, of course, relates to the death, the burial, and the resurrection, but mostly to the death of Jesus Christ on the cross as we approach Easter. And to remember that Easter is not about eggs or bunny rabbits or other things. It's about Jesus Christ. It's about God sending His Son to die on the cross for our sins, that through Jesus Christ there is eternal life. And this simple song, I think, sums it all up on as far as how much God He loved so much that He gave His only begotten. <laughs> from here that we can apply to our lives today from what we see and what took place with Peter. This is not to judge Peter. This is not to condemn Peter. But this is given to us as an example of what can even happen in our lives and I feel it happens 
and in our lives as well. Luke chapter 22, verses 54 and following from, from the Gospel of Luke that we so read. Then seizing him, they led him away, that is, Jesus. They went and they arrested him. And they took him into the house of the high priest. Now Peter followed at a distance. But when they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and had sat down together, Peter sat down with them. A serving girl saw him seated there in the firelight. She looked closely at him and said, this man was with him. Peter, but he denied it. Woman, I don't know him, he said. A little while later, someone else saw him and said, You also are one of them. Man, I am not, Peter answered. Well, Peter replied. So about another hour later, Another asserted person said, Certainly this fellow was with him, for he is a Galilean. Then Peter replied, Man, I don't know what you're talking about. And just as he was speaking, the rooster crowed. The Lord turned and looked straight at Peter. Then Peter remembered the words the Lord had spoken to him. Before the rooster crows today, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. Understand the background of all of this. Judas had gone to the high priest and was willing to betray Jesus for 30 silver coins, 30 pieces of silver. So Judas, along with the temple guards, they go to the to Gethsemane, or he goes with the temple with those who are there, goes to Gethsemane with a kiss. And with 30 pieces of silver in his pocket, he betrays Jesus. Jesus is arrested by the temple guards. They bring Jesus to Caiaphas, who was the high priest at the time, where the teachers of the law and the elders were waiting for Jesus. In other words, all of this was prearranged. It was all set up. This was not something that was done basically at the last minute. They were all waiting. All the elders and the teachers of the law, they all knew that Jesus was going to be arrested. They all knew that Judas was going to do this thing. All of this was prearranged. Earlier, prior to this, before when Jesus and his disciples, before they went to the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus had related to them that one of them would betray him. He also revealed that all of them would fall away. That all of them would not it be there for them when the time had come. Well, Peter being one who we so always often think of, one who doesn't think but speaks before he even thinks. Peter, he proclaims to the Lord that even if all the others fall away, he would never. Now, nah, Lord, I'll be there with you. And Jesus told him, before the rooster crows three times, you will deny me. Or before the rooster crows, you will deny, you will deny me three times. It's a very serious matter to deny Jesus, even today. It's tragic and it is a terrible sin. Peter, denial of the Lord, is usually looked on as a great tragedy, which obviously it was. And so did, what did Judas do as well? Both did a very tragic and terrible thing, both his sin. In all of history, though, in the history of redemption, few saints have fallen to the depths of sin and unfaithfulness that Peter did in denying the Lord Jesus Christ. Yet, few saints have so powerfully been used by God as Peter after he repented and was restored. As it says, he went out and wept bitterly. He did repent. And later in John chapter 21, was restored. The Lord said, feed my sheep, feed my lambs, do this. The account of Peter's denial is a sobering testimony to the weakness of the flesh. 
but it's also an encouraging testimony to the power of God's grace. What do we learn from, Peter, from this that took place in Peter's denial? Many things. Let me just share with you a few. And again, understand, this could happen to any believer today, and it does. And it happens today. Observe, what did Peter do? First of all, Peter followed at a distance. Understand, as it says in verse 54, Peter followed at a distance when they arrested Jesus. Something had changed with Peter. Now, unlike before, he was not boldly proclaiming what he did before. Over in verse 33, of this same chapter you need to understand that this same Peter told Jesus as I related to you he told him that he would defend him he says uh, as, as he as it so proclaims in here uh, in it he says I will defend you I will go to prison with you I will not leave you and I will even die with you uh, concerning what he had related to as he replied, Lord, I am ready to go to prison and to death. Oh, what a proclamation you would think. In the garden, while Jesus is praying, what is Peter and the rest are doing? They are sleeping. They're not praying. They're sleeping. Peter fell asleep, and he does not pray. The disciples, rather than praying, they fell asleep. And I feel like even today, with Christians, rather than praying, we're falling asleep. When we should be praying for God's grace, for God's help, relaxed in our prayer and our call to God. When the guards came to arrest Jesus, sure, Je Peter, he drew his sword and he cut off the ear of the servant of the high priest. But now we see what has happened. Peter falls. He is following at a distance. Is no longer the same person staying in the shadows. Why? Because he's following at a distance rather than walking close with the Lord. Beware. Secondly, we see that Peter follows the enemy. Notice where he goes. He goes into the camp of the enemy. But not only does he go into the camp of the enemy, notice he warms himself by their fire. And then he even sits with the enemy. Very dangerous thing. Peter plops himself right down next to those who are against Jesus. Having kept himself at a safe distance in following and not being arrested, as he proclaimed, Lord, I'll be arrested even with you, and I'll even go with you even to the death. Peter here goes into the camp of the enemy, and he warms himself by their fire. You say, this had to be a brave thing for him to do. No, maybe he just wanted to see what was going to go on, what was going to take place with Jesus. Seeing, okay, what are they going to do next with Jesus? But notice what Peter does. He mingles with those that are standing there. And he tries not to stand out. Not saying, I am a follower of Jesus. Many times I think, this is where we deny the Lord. We don't stand out. We don't make it known. I am a follower of Jesus. go into the camp of the enemy. We try to mingle with them and be like them rather than them being like us or we being like the Lord. Let us beware. And let us learn. You can't sit with the enemy. You can't warm yourself by what they do and not get burned. This is what's going on in the Christian religion today and it's going on in the churches. People are warming themselves in the camp of the enemy by their fire. And slowly, they're getting burned. You heard that old cliche. Put a frog in a hot pot and it just 
comes out. If you put that same frog in a pot of cool water, cold water, and you put that fire underneath the pot, and you let that water just come to a boil, what happens? That frog gets used to that water. Slowly, it gets cooked. Slowly, it gets burned to death. Slowly, he hurts himself because he gets used to what's going on there. Be careful. Be careful. We need to know we cannot sit with the enemy. We cannot warm ourselves by their fire and not get burned. There are some who do, do this, some who go into there, and that's fine. But this is not for everyone, and we need to understand that. There are certain things that we need to understand. Understand earlier, in verse 31, Jesus related to Peter, and he told Simon specifically, he says, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift you as wheat. He has already asked permission from God the Father to sift him, to bring this temptation upon him. In here, but he says, but Peter, I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fall, fail. And when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. In other words, this is going to happen and going to take place with him. Here we see that Satan has asked him to sift him like wheat. And Peter right now, what he does, he plays right into the hands of Satan, going into the camp. See, there are certain things, hey, as a Christian, we should not even attempt to get into. We should not even go there, especially by ourselves. He's all by himself. No one there to help him or to be with him as well. Warming himself by the fire. Beware. We see that Peter failed. Peter stumbles. Warming himself. And so what happens? This brings us to the third thing that we see here. If you notice in verse 56 through, 56 through 62, Peter follows the world, the things of the world. Now he doesn't follow the enemy, but he's now following the things of the world as well. Notice, knowingly, he denies Jesus not just once, not just twice, but he denies Jesus three times. I don't know him. I have never been with him, associated with him. And Matthew says he even hurled up oats and cursing concerning what, how, what he did. I don't know who you're talking about. I have no association with him. I don't even know this man. His behavior is affected. His actions does not line up with what he just said. You are the Messiah, the Christ, the promised one from God. See, understand, when Christians, when believers don't acknowledge Jesus, they're going to act like the world. Let's put it point, point blank. You're going to act like the world, not the things of the Lord, when you do not acknowledge Him as your Lord and Savior. Their behavior becomes like that of the world. It was Peter's behavior like? It was like that of the world, like the enemy. I don't know Jesus. I don't, I, I've never met him. You're mistaken. I'm not one of his. See, they become angry, hostile, bitter. Isn't that what you see right here, Peter? He's angry. He's hostile. Oh, they, they accuse him of, I am not that person. They become like sour grapes rather than sweet honey. They become what they should not. They do the things they should not do. There's no denying it. Peter's actions, his behavior, his performance was not one that truly looked like one who was following Jesus. He was acting like the world. He was acting just the opposite. I truly believe in churches and even here at Bayou Baptist Church, I believe that we have people even here who are in danger because they are following Jesus from a distance. They're in the camp of the enemy, warming themselves in the fire of the camps and the things of the world. And yet, distancing themselves from the things of God. I gave you an illustration many years ago or many months ago or whatever, in the old time when they used to have a call where the seat was all together, two couple, they get married. What happened was the husband driving, the wife on this side, they close together each, and they doing good. But 
a period of time. The husband is still driving. The wife now just slides over. And the wife looks at the husband and says, you don't sit next to me anymore. And the husband turns to the wife and says, I haven't moved. I'm still in the same place. God hasn't moved. We have moved. We're following from a distance rather than walking close by the Lord. We're camping with the enemy rather than walking with the Lord. We're getting burned. Sometimes, you know what? I don't think we even realize it. I don't think we even see it. This danger takes place because of what's happening. However, understand that even though this happened, even though this happened to Peter, it's all not gloom and doom. There is restitution. There is help. There is hope. And it all happened. What had happened here? Peter had failed. His actions, his performance. But remember what Jesus said and what Jesus told him. Peter, Simon has asked to sift you like we. But I have prayed. Not am praying, I have prayed. In other words, Jesus had already prayed about this. He'd already given it up to the Father. He said, I have prayed for you, Simon. And what did he pray? He prayed that your faith may not fail. His actions fail. His performance fail. His behavior fail. But not his faith. Jesus had already prayed for it. Peter went out and he said he wept bitterly. He repented of his sin. And as I mentioned in John chapter 21, we see where Jesus restores Peter. An act of forgiveness. Peter went out and genuinely repented of that sin that he had done. The opposite with Judas. Judas did not go out and repent instead. All he did was run out and he was sorry that he had done what he had done, but he never repented of sin. Instead, hung himself. How sad. Peter goes out and repents and gets back in the grace of God. He's restored in John chapter 21 where Jesus tells Peter, feed my sheep, feed my lambs. Do what I want you to do. And in Acts chapter 2, what is Peter? He is used mightily by the Lord. Gets up and presents the gospel. And that way at that time through many other times as well. Today we need to understand. Don't listen to Satan, the world, or even self. We learn from what happened here to Peter. Confess your sin. Be restored. Be used by God. Follow him, not what the rest of the world is doing, even if it's only you. Even if no one else does, follow him, even if it's by yourself. Do it. Just do it. Don't follow from a distance. Follow close by. Jesus says, walk with me. Remember in the Old Testament, God told Abraham, what did he say? Come, walk with me. He didn't tell Abraham, get behind me and I'll come up here, you can walk up. He said, walk with me. And this is what our God wants us to do today through Jesus Christ. Walk with him. Not with the world, the things of the world. This is what's killing our churches, our people, and Christianity. We're not walking with the Lord. That's what it takes. Not getting in the camps with everybody else that is not of the Lord. And I'm not talking about not going out and evangelizing. Yes, we need to go out and evangelize. Yes, we need to go and share the gospel and tell everybody what, about Jesus Christ. But we ourselves need to be careful that we do not become like the rest of the world and not do the things of God. This is what's killing America today. This is what's hurting Christianity. We are not taking a stand. We are following at a distance. We need to do these things. Do you hear in a distance? The rooster crows. And what did it say? It said when the rooster crowed, Jesus looked at Peter. Didn't say a word. He looked at Peter. And Peter knew. I had sinned. Peter didn't blame anybody else. He didn't blame the other disciples. He didn't say, well, Lord, they all did the same thing. He knew. I had sinned. Went out and he wept the lip, repented of sin. What about you today? Are you truly following Jesus Christ closely? Or is it from a distance? 
What has the Lord revealed to you today? Let us stand. Almighty God, we come before you. Father, whomever you have spoken to today, I pray for your grace and for your mercy for any and all. Pray for salvation, for a closer walk with you, for whatever you laid upon each and every heart. Pray at this time that they will come and embrace you today. In the name of Jesus, amen. Journey in number 300. Without him, says it all. I can do nothing without him. With him, we can do all things and everything. Give your life to him. Come unto him. And walk with him. And he will be with you. The Lord has laid upon your heart to come. You come as we sing 300.
it does it, it just plays online. There's still a lot of work to do here at the church. There are times when I get discouraged. There are times where I, like you, I feel like I'm the only one. I look out and I see where people who are not here, and it breaks my heart to see them not here as well. I care a whole lot about Bayou you at this church and what is taking place, and it breaks my heart to see those who aren't here with us for whatever reason. But where does it take place again? I just feel overwhelmed with everything. I am just sharing my heart to you. I felt I have with a couple other people already, and I wanted to share it openly. I just ask you to pray for me, and whatever the Lord leads and God directs me to do, I, I have no idea at this point. I'm still praying about certain things concerning what I have to do. And I am not blaming anyone. Just as I am, he is. We all are. We face trials and tribulations every day. Things happen. And sometimes, Father, we feel that we just almost can't go on. But I thank you, Lord, for my brothers and sisters in Christ. Thank you for my pastor and his family. 
Father, I thank you for the strength that we get from one another. I know, Father, sometimes it gets real hard. But I pray that we never, never look away from you. That, Father, you're always there. And that we always feel your presence. Thank you again for the blessings. May we always remember those blessings. May, Father, we always be able to look toward the good and how it does outweigh the bad. Be with us now. Take care of each and every one of us. Watch over us. Son's precious name we pray. Amen.